I decided that I wanted to make a video wrapping up my first six months of 2023, what I read during those six months. This is a stack that you can't fully see, which is fine. Is it? It's gonna have to be. This is a lot of books. For me, this is a lot of books. I counted. There is one missing that I do not own that I read. So in all, in the first half of this year, I have read 20 books. And that's crazy. So there's 19 right here. That is so amazing. I'm so proud of myself for doing that. Thanks to maternity leave, it was possible. <laughs> I feel like my pace has really picked up the older that my baby has gotten and she's established a better sleeping routine. So then I've had more free time and it's great. I think I'm just gonna start because I really don't know how much I'm gonna end up talking. So the first book that I read this year was The Book Thief. It had taken me a long time. I actually started it in 2022 when I was pregnant and then had the baby and just took a huge break and this was also when I was annotating which I kind of want to get back into but it definitely makes reading take a little bit longer but then you can go back and read like your favorite passages and it's really cool so I think I do want to get into annotating and maybe make a video on like what I like to annotate and how I do it yeah the book thief I rated this a five out of five it was a fantastic book. I don't know if I'm going to give ratings for all of these books because I, I feel like it will take a very long time, but maybe. I don't know. The writing style and the fact that it was just like a young girl talking to you and it was very real and extremely devastating. And me and my historical fictions were, I love them for some reason, so. Then I read Breathless by Jennifer Navon, which she wrote, yeah, All the Bright Places, which I read in high school, I think. And I really liked that. Well, I liked, really liked All the Bright Places. I pretty much enjoyed Enjoy this it's you know reading YA's as an older young adult I guess I'm not a huge fan of YA's or kind of romance coming to age things they just they feel cheesy to me but sometimes I do like to read something simple and after the uh, the book thief that's why I picked this one up because I was like I need something simple and my mom got it for me for Christmas so yeah I think I rated this one around a two or three out of five which my rating system maybe I'll have to like put in a little insert in this video to describe my rating system a two out of five is pretty average I'd say <sighs> Next, I read The Secret History. Now, uh, Brittany Broski has some explaining to do. She is the reason, well, she's the main reason. I had heard a lot of people talk about how much they loved this book and like the dark academia and it was just, it was so well written and people loved Donna Tartt. So I had really, really high hopes about this book. And let me tell you, it looks small, but like the writing is also small and the pages are incredibly thin. This, pa this book, is like 540 pages long. It was so much to get through, but I was so determined to finish it because I thought everybody loves this. Anyways, I gave this like probably a one star out of five, maybe two, maybe two. There were just so many like run on paragraphs and chapters. The chapters are so long, the paragraphs are so long and it just feels completely unnecessary. And I didn't, just didn't really like it. I don't know, I didn't get the hype. I didn't understand. Then I read another really hyped up one, Cerse by Madeline Miller. I had actually purchased this for Josh, my boyfriend, to read, and he still has not read it. I figured I want to, I want to read Madeline Miller's books, so I gave this one a read. I, it was good. It was not as good as I was expecting, but again, I feel like I really get my hopes up in all of the hyped up books, and I feel like it's it's very difficult and kind of unfair to expect really hyped up books to meet everything that you were hoping for so i don't want to rate this badly i'd say it was about a three or a four yeah that's a that's a really good rating honestly a three out of four out of five i just think that maybe greek mythology is not really my thing unless i can brush up on all of the gods and stuff i just feel like there was a lot of me trying to figure out who the hell they were talking about <laughs> the inheritance games another one that was going around book talk i wanted something mysterious to read now i think i was talking to josh about this i think i would would have really enjoyed this 
in high school. I think this would have been probably among my favorite books if I had read it as a younger, maybe even junior high actually. I feel like more junior high would be appropriate. But yeah, it felt kind of young. There were a lot of cool like puzzles and stuff. You know, as a 24 year old, it wasn't like super mind blowing, I guess. Um, I think I gave this about like a 2.5 out of five. It was pretty good, I don't know. Pretty good. And then I read the finale in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. Now this one I actually was pleasantly surprised about. Um, obviously I had read the first two. They are really easy to read very quickly. They're one of those books that you can just like pick up and not want to put down. It's just, it's super easy to read and pretty interesting. I, I like the concept. I feel like it's kind of a unique concept. Kind of gives me like Pretty Little Liar vibes. Maybe that's why I enjoyed it because that was my guilty pleasure watch while I was pregnant. <laughs> yeah, I think there were moments where I felt like there were like some corny bits and pieces, but they are YAs, so like it's it's understandable completely. I think this is a great series, honestly, if you want something that's easy to read and it's a bit mysterious and just gives me like high school vibes, like makes me want to go back to high school even though I fucking hated it. Um, I think I rated this about a three out of five maybe a three or four because i think there was a lot of stuff in here that i was not expecting and also the layout of like there's the podcast research and all of the interviews and stuff interspersed with the actual novel i really enjoyed that this babble this was my first five star rating since the book thief the book thief was my only five star rating that I think I've ever given. But then again, I've only just gotten into reading books the way that I have been reading them lately, so. Babel was, honestly, I feel like everything I was kind of expecting out of A Secret History and more. And I really, I was really just surprised at how much I really loved this book. I hear some controversial things about it, like it's, it's a little preachy and whatever. I honestly, I don't think it's preachy. I think it's really well written. I think the things that they talk about in it are really, are obviously relevant and make sense with the story and the characters. Oh my god, I, I, I can't even describe, I need to reread this book, I really need to reread it because I've had other people come to me and say that they didn't like it and I'm like what the hell am I missing because I was obsessed with this book. I did mark off a couple of bits in it that I liked but I want to fully go through it again and annotate it. This book made me cry and I don't ever remember a book making me cry but this one fully I was like sitting over on the couch bawling my eyes out at the end of it so... Then I finally finished Empire of Storms, which as you can see, the first half I was annotating it and then did not at all. It took me so long. Like this was another one that I had started in 2022 and then just had to like pick it up again. The Throne of Glass series, I just really love. I'm currently reading Tower of Dawn. I don't know, I, I'm, I don't think I'm a big fantasy person, which is kind of surprising. I feel like that should be my favorite genre, but I find it overwhelming at times. I do find that these later books, the bigger they are, the more stuff that they have, I do get a little bit more overwhelmed, but if I read them closer together, I should be okay, you know? It's just really hard, like with ADHD trying to keep up with this shit, it's, it's a little bit hard, but really well written. Love the characters. Don't love the romance side. I don't want to give out spoilers, but there are some couples that I miss. I miss particular people when they were seeing other particular people and don't agree with the people that they've end up, ended up with. I just don't. Empire of Storms, I would say a solid three out of five. I feel like that's also a very, I don't think that's an accurate rating just because I had such a long gap between reading it all. So I don't know, 3.5, sure. Then I read Where the Crawdads Sing. This was one that like everybody has been talking about. Everybody has been talking about. I have never seen the movie and I also didn't know what the book was about. I just picked it up at, did I get it? Yeah, I got it at the used bookstore. I read this in two days, which was crazy. It was another one that was just kind of like really easy to get hooked into and really easy to read and just nice. I That's how I would describe this book. It was just a nice read and I would give it four out of five stars. I think when I initially read it, I said it was a five star book but I don't know what I need to I need to review I need to review my star situation because I don't know if I'm rating things accurately at all then I read tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow I was in love with this book I could not put it down for at least like the first half it was it is it is a very beautiful 
and well-written book. The characters, which I have seen people like say that they don't really like the characters. I personally love Sadie and Sam so much. I loved the flashbacks to uh, when they were kids. I just thought it was so beautiful but then the timelines and the time jumps that happen in the second half and then where everybody ends up is not my favorite i really was really i was incredibly disappointed in the second half i wish i didn't have to say that because the first was the first half was just so beautiful and if i was rating it off the first half alone i'd give it a five stars out of five but i think it has to be taken down to like a 3.5 because i was very very disappointed in the end i'm so sad to say that i really am because again beautifully written at the start of the book okay here's another one that i contemplated dnfing multiple times for reading it and that is the atlas six another one that is in just super popular and everybody loves it and it's more of that kind of magic academia vibes oh it was like painful it was this was kind of, it was actually painful to read didn't like any of the characters i didn't like all the moments felt forced i don't know the interactions and the the descriptions and the way that it was written was like there were a lot of repetitive words and phrases and just didn't like it i just did not like this book at all i'm not going to bother putting myself through any the sequel is it a trilogy i think it's just there's two books I'm not gonna fucking bother with that. I have no interest at all. And I think for a star rating for that one, I'd give it like one star. <laughs> then I finally read one of Emily Henry's books. So I picked up Book Lovers at the used bookstore. I think I've said this before, but romance is not really my thing. It's along with YA. I tend to enjoy YA more than romance honestly because I find it hard to write well or maybe that's I don't know I, I feel like if I don't like a genre I can't say that it's hard to write well because if I already don't like it that's my biased opinion going into how it's written but whatever I think that I think that romance is generally not my thing but I like to have an easy book to read like these are the when I'm looking for something easy after I've read like a really depressing book or one like the fucking Atlas Six that took me nine years to get through and I hated every minute of it that's when I read books like these and you know what I did like the characters I did enjoy the the setting especially the kind of like small town and the writers I love when story the writers because that's just all I fucking fantasize about is being a writer and living my fairy tale dream life I'd say 2.5 out of 5 for this one no that's not fair I'd say a 3 because I feel like that's what I gave after I read it and I actually enjoyed it then I read Song of Achilles another Madeline Miller another one from the thrift bookstore the secondhand bookstore it would take me a long time to get my hands on this one. I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I read it because it's one of those classics that everybody talks about that you need to read. And it's just, it's a it's a beautiful love story. I, let me think. I think it was the first part of the book. It took me a while to get into this, but once I did, it was pretty easy to read and I just wanted to know what happened next. It was nice. It was another one of those books that I was like, yeah, it's nice. Not my favorite. Again, don't think Greek mythology is my thing. I loved the Percy Jackson series though when I was in elementary school, but that was when I was in elementary school. I probably knew a lot more about it back then. So I think what I would give this, I think I gave this a, a four stars after I finished reading it. So I'll stick with that four stars because I think she's a great writer. Yeah, I think she's a great writer. Then I got Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang who wrote Babel. Yes, I bought this book simply because she wrote it and I was like I need to read more of your stuff and it had like just gotten released so I bought it. I did like audibly giggle while I was reading this a couple of times but I feel like the ending was a little bit odd. I see a lot of people talk about this and how it's kind of like obvious the tones of the conversations in this book. It's kind of obvious where the author stands and how they feel about the situations that happen in this book which I, I think it's fine. I don't know. I was kind of hoping for more out of this book, I think. I, I know that I gave it like a three or a four out of five, which I will stick by that because I did, like I said, I giggled and it was it was fun and it was a very easy read. I think I also read this one in a couple of days. I'm not a huge fan of having somebody, the main character be somebody that you know is kind of like in the wrong and you're kind of battling with that with the whole time. You're like, am I supposed to think that they're the, like the villain of the story or 
that they're the bad guy. I don't know. I also think that that's a good thing. I think it's cool to have an ambiguous character. It's a decent book. She's a great writer though. I stand by that. I love her writing so much. I cannot wait to read The Poppy War. I've heard that it's very heavy, so I'm just gonna read a couple of easy books before I get into that. Next, I read The Paris Library. Loved this book. I believe this is a five-star book for me. It's another historical fiction. It is just beautiful. It goes between two characters, a young girl, Lily, in the future, and then I thought her name was Odile, but they explained it in the book. I think it's Odile, like O-D-I-L-E. I thought it was supposed to be pronounced Odile, but her name's Odile. Anyways, it's about those two characters, those two women, and it can be like heart-wrenching at times, but it's not as heart-wrenching as like, say, The Book Thief. Also has a lot of like positive moments and it has a lot of like beautiful quotes. Oh, I love, I did annotate this one, but with my phone, which is mainly how I've been annotating lately. I just like take pictures and then highlight and stuff so I don't have to write in them, which I do like. I do enjoy doing that. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to describe books very well, fucking clearly, but I loved, I loved this one. The Cruel Prince, another book talk recommendation that I took a little while to read. And I will say, I am on The Wicked Prince. I may DNF it, but I don't want to because I paid good money for these books. Like I bought these brand new, so I'm trying not to DNF books that I buy brand new or that have I've bought recently because it just, it's ridiculous. But I, I thought I was gonna enjoy this more than I, than I do. I think I had expected a more positive and bright fairy vibe and that's just not what this is but that's my bad again my expectations going into it have been dampened by myself <laughs> it's not that it's poorly written I don't know I feel like maybe I just I don't like the characters I think I don't resonate with them at all and I think that that's putting me at a distance while I'm reading it and that's not enjoyable for me so I think um this one was a two out of five for me because it has good writing but it's just not for me. Another five star. This is yet another one that was incredibly popular on like TikTok, Instagram, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, but I actually was not disappointed by this one. This was another one that I was, it was so easy for me to breeze through and it's, it's like a decent sized book, but like I loved this book. I could not put it down. It was so beautiful, had a twist that I was not expecting and it had, it had some lesbian romance. So that's just beautiful and gorgeous and everything that you need in the book. Her writing is awesome. I am kind of debating getting Malibu Rising um, by Taylor Jenkins Reid or Daisy Jones and the Six. I don't really know. I don't think I'm gonna like the Carrie Soto is back. I don't think I'm gonna like that tennis book. I need some recommendations on her books and which one I should read if I really liked this one because I really did. Then I read between Shades of Grey. I can't remember where I heard about this book, but I had a really hard time finding it. I couldn't find it in any bookstores, so I did find it at the used bookstore. I think somebody like posted a book about like an important book to read or a book that they loved or it was it was something poignant. They liked this book for a very specific reason. So I was like, they feel very strongly about that. I should probably read it. And so I did. This one's, it's a hard read. It was very hard for me as I'm now a mother. Oh my God. There were moments when I kind of thought I might have to put the book down, but I didn't. I'm glad that I didn't because it's, it's a beautiful book. It's so, so well written. I do recommend that people read this because it's just oh uh, uh, yeah it's more along the lines of the book thief and there are a lot of parts of this story that are true that did happen which makes it all the more difficult to read but yeah it was it was a fantastic book beautifully written i think i gave that like 4.5 or 4.5 out of 5 stars just because I had such a hard time with some of the content so do read like kind of trigger warnings before you read that and the last one that I finished was the Hawthorne legacy I honestly think that so this is the sequel to the inheritance games and I honestly think that I I didn't like this one as much as the first one and I don't think I'm gonna read the finale I just it was really hard for me because the relationships I think the relationships were very corny and those interactions with those people were very corny I don't think that the actual mystery part of it was that bad I just think that I have an issue with romance I just I just do I guess I don't know but that oh my god can I bring this Let's see if I can lift this up. Oh dear. 
Oh my god, I did it! <laughs> that is all the books that I've read so far this year. Oh my god, I made a mess. <laughs> yeah! And now I'm currently reading Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass in the Throne of Glass series, as well as um, the, House on the, the House on the Cerulean Sea. Is that how that's pronounced? By TJ Klune. And that's, it's very cute, by the way. I really like it so far. I'm not that far into it, but I'm really enjoying it. Anyways, yeah, I kind of want to make more videos about books because it is like I am hyper fixated on reading right now. It is awful because I'm spending so much money on it. But whatever. I think this Christmas I'm going to have to ask for a Kindle because all of these physical books, they get so expensive, but they also take up so much space. And I just don't have the space for that. I'm sweating. It is too warm and I need to clean up all of my books. If you watched this far, thanks. And let me know if you have read or are going to read any of these books and then tell me what you think of them because i'm always so interested in seeing especially books that i love i like to hear other people's thoughts on them okay